everybody. It is Saturday morning, December, uh, what is it? December 9th? Mm, I, it's, I guess I think it's December 9th. So anyway, yeah, it is. something like that. So I just wanted to go over what we're going to try to tackle today. Um, December 11th. I think it's the 9th. Anyway, here is, a. I'm looking at window options. As you've seen before, I bought those two huge used RV windows, which are just way too big for this thing. So these are the ones that I talked about getting on Amazon for like 30 or 35 bucks or something a piece. My initial idea was to spray paint them black so they would kind of match. But since one of these French frames is inlaid there, or maybe it's not. If it's not inlaid, then I'm going to paint them black. But if I can't get to those French little frame deals, I got to leave it white. But one of the things I want to do is round these corners just to kind of make it look like an RV window. And these should fit between the studs, just like they said, and they do. So these are going to go on either side, of course, because they match. I have two of those. And then front and back, I do want a back window, but these RV windows are so expensive. So I thought about, these are like 10 or $11, these little portholes. Yeah. I got two of these. And I just thought how cool it might be to have a couple of these off the back. So we could just open them up for ventilation or whatever. Um, simple installation, of course, just like any other window. They're black. So if I'm able to paint these black, then these are black. And our <laughs> it should match pretty good. Now, while I was doing my shopping, I kind of freaked out and bought this thing too because it's still in really good shape and I got it for like $25. But then I'm kind of struggling where to put it. Um, not really sure yet if I'm going to use this one. I might. I have one. It would fit sweet across the back if I reframe that and stuck it across the back. Yeah, besides, wait, this would be outside and we had half the lens coming. Yeah, maybe I could put these forward. So we have the, the French looking window deal and then the porthole. Or I could put two portholes up front. Yeah. Might be cool, huh? Yeah, we could see the truck. Well, Ellie's going to sleep with us in here. She's my little personal heater. <laughs> so that's what we're going to try to tackle today. Among zipping up more and more framing and stuff, I've still not finished this because, like I said before, I'm going to add some kind of framing system back here to support uh, this. I got this in now, this little 5000 BTU uh, air conditioner. It's the smallest one I could find. And it's got really good reviews and it's cheap. It's like 159 bucks. I don't want it off the front. Like I said, it looks ugly. So I'm going to try to figure out a way to have some shelving back here. And then it, it fits flush inside so it's clean and we don't lose any space. But it's framed out to the back and encased. And then I can open a little door so it breathes when we turn it on. So that's what we're going to try to tackle today. Um, and we'll see how it goes. I was also able to get a pair of wheel wells off the internet. These things were cheap. They were like 22 bucks a piece. They're serious steel. Uh, of course, I'm going to paint them black. Um, they will work easy. I'll have to space them about an inch off the trailer to cover the whole side of the tire. Last thing I want is mud flinging everywhere. So, um, but I had some other ideas. If you look at this picture here, I'm not sure if I can incorporate these. Maybe cut them. And then, I'm not sure, extend it, put a box over here. But um, that's another thought I'm processing. I also am thinking ahead on a, about a spare tire. I see a lot of guys uh, with, the, with their spare tire hanging off the back. Of course, you know I can't do that with what I want to do there. I talked about putting it up here, which would work. But I'm trying to leave as much area open for storage racks and stuff like that. I have all kinds of weird ideas with a shower thing up here and not there yet. But so I think what I'm going to do is just, I'm going to go with a donut tire, 13 by four, 185, 80, 13, six ply trailer tire. It's heavy duty, 50 pounds of air in it. I put a brass stem in there, high pressure stem. And I'm thinking maybe I could stick it under here, but again, I, I want to try to keep as much area for storage as possible. So thought number two would be, I could bolt it up under here somewhere. 
So I'm, I haven't measured, but maybe it'll fit between here. I could create some kind of shelf to slide it in there and, you know, wouldn't that work? Yeah. So just thinking ahead, working, working. Hey everybody, so it's Sunday evening and uh, we worked a lot yesterday. Uh, got a lot of the framing done here, here, finished off the roof up here. And then uh, uh, I was able to frame the roof as you can see and then today what I've done is gone back through and every corner I've used these sub angle supports so I've got solid joists going across the, the middle like that the, the uh, two by twos and then I've got um, these three all the way down the middle I staggered them so I could get a long screw into the ends of all of them and then backed them up with all these brackets um, as well as this part here. I'm sure that there's probably an easier way to do this uh, seeing as that is a ton of work zipping in all of these brackets. Um, as you can see some of them are angled. What I was doing was as you're putting these brackets in I want to get them tight but they tend to tweak a little so I was using the tapered flare at the end of the head here to tweak it back. I would pull it on one side of the opening of the hole or on the other side. So they all remain flush top and bottom. So you don't have any metal sticking up, wearing out whatever roof material you're gonna use. But like I said, it's it's solid up there. And when you back it up with a roof, it's gonna be even better, so. So I'm gonna go ahead and do one of these windows. Um, a few guys do show you how to do it but they don't go really into depth except for this one guy I've been watching for a couple years at DIY camper on YouTube but you use your inner measurements here this happens to be exactly 14 across by 21 up and down there so you want your opening to be a little bit bigger than 14 and a little bit bigger than 21 but you don't want it too big you still want your or your screws to be able to grab onto whatever you're going to plug this in so what I did was I measured I stuck the window in between the studs there and I measured top and bottom and then I put a screw hole on the inside at every corner making 21 the farthest point top to bottom 18 farthest point like that and then uh, you drill your holes from the inside so you know where you're at and come around here and then I measured again to make sure I was a hair over 21 top and bottom and a hair over 18 side to side and then I used the square to make my lines and then you take a jigsaw and you cut the sucker out slap your window in there windows from what I'm told of course I've never done anything like this but and I'm learning as I go thanks to YouTube but from what I understand you get your holes done and then the last thing you do is your window and your door once you have your final skins over it and everything and you waterproof it over the final skin which makes a lot of sense to me. Same with the vent. So vent windows and doors. So I'm going to give this one a shot, cut it out and see how it looks. essence I screwed up the window um, or I screwed up the cut so look I put a screw see how it's coming out the hole there so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut I'm gonna split the difference between the wood and I'm gonna zip a couple screws in here just two to hold it where I want it and then I'm gonna build the frame below and above it using the uh, two by threes behind it and then It'll be, it'll be fine, it'll sit in there fine, and then I'll sand it out by weather sealing it and everything. So. All right, it's Monday morning. Uh, Mom had to do some Christmas shopping. So I took the day off, and uh, I got two windows cut. This one came out a lot cleaner, not a lot of space in between, but they both fit, <clears throat> and tried them with or without the jams in here. So 
those two windows are in and then uh, those portholes i'm not exactly sure what we're going to do with those so anyway got two windows in uh monday morning gonna keep on working all right sun's starting to set on monday um spent most of my time trying to figure out how i was going to put the ac in and i think i figured out a way I want the back to um, taper up kind of like they do with the off-road trailers so you have clearance at angles and um, these aren't the the final boards that I'm going to use to skin it these are just supports for the AC and then I'll obviously bring flush framing up here to skin it flush and then I'm going to use um, two by twos going down here these will just be inside but I'll use two by twos to act as supports to skin everything. So I think I figured it out. Um, it's in here super tight. Uh, I came up with this little gig because um, I know that trailers bounce and stuff. I'm, I'm a mellow guy with the trailers, but um, this is in here pretty tight. And this, the whole unit's in tight. It's all boxed in here. And then I did that little lip that they talk about in the instructions so it can't come forward and then it makes it flush on both sides so uh came out good um this is just to keep it from you know uh endoing the back end popping up so i'm trying to figure out what i'm gonna do uh, i'm gonna build the box up somehow i'm gonna make this more internal storage i decided to 86 this support it somehow make this more shelving inside um or maybe a coat hanger, you know, to hang your clothes or what have you. But um, it'll all be inside, nothing will be exposed. And then I'm gonna tr try to develop or design like a slider that I can slide down in and lock. Squids, squids all around us. I'm gonna try to design a frame over this thing and then a sliding door, like I said. Do not do this at home. So, um, do what at home? Yes. Be careful, buddy still got his bed head so yeah anyway I went right down here so that these um, two by threes rest down on the deck and then I screwed them in super deep um, and then I I backed them up behind this board here and I still have a little more screws to go up in there but I, I don't see this thing this is 50 pounds I didn't realize I don't see it breaking these things I mean it's it is, it is rock solid. So, and again, these are just for the AC. And I'll do weaker supports with one, uh, two by twos to skin it and then um, make some more shelving and stuff in here. I guess firewood's not gonna go in here. I'll have to figure something else out. I think it's more valuable to have more interior cabinets and stuff. So that's it for today. Uh, yeah, it took me all day to figure this out and get this dialed. I've never, like I said, I've never done nothing like this. And basically I sit here and I kind of develop a plan and I experiment and I go from there. And I think it came out good. Um, we're going to have three beds inside of here. A bed up here for the little guy running around me right now. A bed that'll be this height and about six feet, putting her feet into the counter with a mattress. And then I'm going to be on the floor. I had to put this in the exact spot so it wouldn't interfere with her bed, his bed and other things so a lot of a lot of forward thinking but let's see what she looks like on the profile with the little deal off the back so it's coming together so we'll see you next time